Let's have a look at what kind of things you should take into account when preparing the sales forecast. So first of all, most of the sales forecast will be subject to some sort of a seasonality effect. In other words, the sales will be different in different periods of the year. It might be due to the weather or to, due to the product cycle. Seasonality is the strongest, obviously, in consumer goods. For example, ice creams will have a much higher sales in the summer than in the winter. Then on top of that, you should also take into account demographics and other structural changes. So if your customer group is getting smaller due to changes in age, then this will have a huge impact on the sales. There may be also some other structural changes, maybe, for example, due to law or reaching saturation point. You also should check whether your market is growing or contracting before you start predicting the sales for your product. So your sales may grow despite the markets going down. However, most likely the behavior of your sales will replicate what's happening on the market. In a very same manner, you should look at the sales channels. So your sales to a large extent depends on how you deliver your product to your customers. So if the market is growing, but the sales channels in which you are are shrinking, then you actually may be losing some sales. So this is also something you should account for. In some cases, it also makes sense to look at the related markets. So for example, if you are selling ceramic tiles or furniture, you'd look at what's happening with the market for new houses. If the new houses are increasing, most likely your market will grow as well after a few months. So in these cases, you look at the growth of related markets. Remember that there might be some one-offs on the market on which you work. And this means that those one-offs should be removed from historical data and may be added in the forecast if you know that they may happen. Most of those one-offs are related to some unpredictable things or change of law. Another thing that you should take into account, especially when it comes to selling in B2B, is the cycle of sales. So in the consumer goods, the sales is very fast. You go to the store or you go to the e-commerce site and you simply buy the product. But in B2B, in many cases, the cycle of sales is very long. So it takes a lot of time to sell a specific product. It might be a few months or even years. So in this case, if you have a long cycle of sales, you can actually have a lot of additional data. However, there will be a problem of when the sales actually will happen. It also makes sense, especially when it comes to consumer goods, to look at the different level of promotions and marketing support. So in historical data, you may have had a different level of promotions than in the future. So you also should account for that as well. In a sense, this is some sort of a seasonality effect. However, I would treat it differently because this is not driven by the customer, but by the decision of you and your competitors. It makes also sense to check the sales elasticity, especially if you plan changes in the prices, as well as the change in customer behavior. Some of the effects will be already in demographics and growth or contraction of your market, but some of them may be slower ones and they should be also taken into account separately as well. Another thing to consider is bundling of products. So this goes both for historical data as well as the future forecast. The products sold independently and in bundle will behave differently. So if there is a change in that, you should account for the bundling effect or unbundling effect in your sales forecast. And finally, in many cases, the inventory level, the stock level impacts the sales. So you should also look at this and account for that in your sales forecast. So that's in short what kind of things that you may have to take into account in your sales forecast. In the case studies, you will see that usually you take into account three or four out of the things that we have mentioned here, but it always makes sense to have this list in the back of your mind when you are building the sales forecast model.